In this video, we'll have a look at the basics of modeling in Blender. We'll be making this low poly barrel, but you should be able to take the same techniques and apply them to a variety of different objects. So let's get into it. So for now, we're not going to be needing either our light or our cube. So let's go ahead and remove those. We can then add in a new cylinder. And when we first add objects into our scene, we have a few possibilities down here. What I want to do is go ahead and change our vertices count to 16. This gives more of that low poly look. And let's hit five to go into orthographic mode. Now, so far, we've only been dealing with objects in object mode. Object mode is used to control properties for an entire object and to switch between objects. However, most of modeling is actually done inside of edit mode. You can change between object mode and edit mode down here, or you can toggle between them by using tab. As you can see, when we enter edit mode, the mesh, meaning the geometry of our object becomes visible. Our object is made up of vertices, which are these points, edges, which is the lines between points, and faces, which is everything in between. You can switch between selecting vertices, edges, and faces down here. So if we go back to viewing everything from the front and we click on vertex select, we can always deselect whatever we currently have selected by hitting A. And if you have nothing selected, it's going to select everything. So in our case here, we want to go ahead and scale it up on the set axis. So we'll hit S and then Z and drag it up a bit. I want to make it so that our barrel is a bit wider at the center than at the top and bottom. But we don't currently have any vertices that we can change here. In other words, we need to add more geometry to our mesh. Luckily, you can easily subdivide our mesh further by by hitting Ctrl R. And if we then use the scroll wheel, we can choose how many subdivisions we want. In our case, let's just add two. You can also just go ahead and press the two key. If we then left click, we are able to slide these loops up and down on our model. If we just want them to be on the center, we right click. So now we've added some extra geometry and we can go ahead and scale this up using the S key. So let's just scale it up a tiny bit. Let's then hit A to deselect. And our barrel now looks much more like a barrel. We can always go and adjust the shape of these loops afterwards. To do that, that we could press the B key in order to box select and select all of these vertices. However, here's a common pitfall, because if I now go ahead and rotate our view, you can see that we've actually only selected the visible vertices and not those on the other side. And that means if we were to go ahead and scale this, we would get a really weird shape. To get around this, we go back to the front view and we change to wireframe. We can actually toggle between solid and wireframe by hitting Z. Now, if we were to select these edges again, you can see that it selects all the way through to both sides. And so we can select all of them and scale them up more if we wanted to. Next up, I want to make the top and bottom of our barrel. More specifically, I want to extrude the top a bit inwards. If we want to select all of the vertices along the top here, we could shift into side view, hit Z, hit B, and then select all of them. And that definitely works. But I find that an easier way is simply holding down Alt and right clicking. This way Blender will automatically detect the loop and select all of the vertices in it. Now you might think here that all we need to do is scale it inwards, but you can see that doesn't give us the effect that we want. Instead, we want to use extrude. To extrude, we hit the E key. And now we've added some extra geometry at our end point here that we can then go and extrude out. But we don't want this to extrude out. We want this to extrude inwards. So what we do is right click. This doesn't cancel the extrude. It's still there if we try and move it. It just places it on top of the original face. And if we now hit the S key and scale it in, we can see that loop appearing. If we then hit the E key once more, and this time only extrude along the Z axis and then drag it down, we get that burn looking lid. Of course, we've currently only done this on the top and not on the bottom. We could go down here and do it on the bottom as well. If we wanted to be totally symmetrical, we could do them both at the same time, or we could use mirroring. Now, this is a pretty cool feature. If we snap to the front view, go into wireframe, hit Ctrl R to add a subdivision loop. We only want to add a single one. So let's left click and let's right click to add it in the center. We can then deselect, hit B to box select the bottom ones, X to remove them. And we want to remove all of the vertices. What we can now do is switch into object mode, go over here to the modifiers panel, hit add modifier. And here we can do all sorts of things to generate extra geometry or modify our model in a bunch of ways. We'll select the mirror modifier and we want to mirror it along the Z axis and we'll allow. Now any change that we make to our model in edit mode will be reflected on the other side. And when you're satisfied with your model, just go ahead and exit out of edit mode and hit apply. Now I also want to make some metallic rings to go 
around our barrel. To do that, let's hit Shift A to create a new mesh. Let's also make this a cylinder. Let's hit Z so we can see it in wireframe mode. Let's hit Tab to go into edit mode. Let's scale this up so that it's just a tad bigger than our barrel. And let's scale it down on the Z axis to make it thinner. We can then go ahead and grab this and move it up to the top of our barrel. Then we can duplicate it and move it down on the Z axis to the bottom of our barrel. And now if we go back to object mode and to solid view, we can see that we have two rings around our barrel. Now we created these in object mode and that means that they are currently subject objects from our barrel. Now this may be something that you want. If you only want some barrels to have these, then it's a good thing they're a separate object. But in our case, they're a pretty integral part of our model. And so it makes sense to combine them. To do that, we first click on the rings, hold down shift and click on the barrel. And to join them, we hit control J. As you can see in our outliner, they are now just one object. And we'll also go ahead and rename this object to barrel. Finally, let's go under material, hit new, and let's add a brown material to this. Something like that. This is going to be our wood material. We of course want our metal rings to be of a separate material. So what we'll do is go into edit mode. Let's select our two rings by holding down alt and shift to select all of the edge loops. Then going up here and adding a new material. Let's hit new. And to assign this material to these vertices, we hit the assign button. Now out of edit mode and we can choose a color for these metal bands. And there we go. We can switch back into perspective mode and have a look at our first barrel model. And and for good measure's sake, let's just rename this material to rings. So congratulations. Let's save our file by going to file, save as, or hitting control S. I'm just going to call mine barrel and hit save as blender file. That's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next one. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all of the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in April. And a special thanks to Derek Heemskirk, Faisal Marify, James Callahan, Cyborg Mummy, Cole Cabral, and Jason Latito. If you want to become a patron yourself, you can do so at Patreon. Com slash brackies. 